What's up my fellow greasers? I'm back as promised with a demonstration and review of this Maker's Heart Homestead Sea Salt Hair Tonic. So I have not, since I got this, I've not smelled it, I have not used it, so you're going to be experiencing first impressions, legitimate first impressions. Um, I know I need to shave. I'm actually about to jump in the shower and get cleaned up before going to a community group for church. But I wanted to give this a try uh, and see how it goes in, how it feels. If it's too oily, I can always rinse it out um, and just kind of see what it does to my hair. Um, I've got a little bit of buildup, a couple days worth of um, what I use, Murray Superior Vintage. Um, and uh, just kind of washed with hot water in between. So let's see what this stuff does. I want to show you once again the lights a little better in here. How this stuff looks. It's really wild. It's like uh, it's almost like liquid metal in there. I, I probably should get out more because I, I doubt this fascinates everyone else as much as it does me, but I could just, I find this mesmerizing. Anyway, I showed you that in the last video. So they say to shake this stuff well before use. So we're going to do that. This is what it looks like now that it's kind of shaken up. It's actually kind of similar, but... And I'm going to spray this onto my hands just to kind of see what it looks like. So I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't really, I just spilled it all over my counter. It doesn't really look that unusual. It doesn't smell as good as I expected. So. I'm just going to spray this directly in my eye. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to kind of spray this in my hair. I'm not sure if that's the best way to apply it. I'm try spraying some in my hand here. It definitely sprays in kind of big cloud, <laughs> which is not helpful. Uh, it's probably going to get edited out of this video, but <laughs> I tried to spray it <laughs> in my hair the first time, and I mostly got it in my eye. <laughs> So that was not fun. I have to say uh, I'm surprised and a little disappointed that this doesn't have some kind of bodacious smell to it. And maybe that's good. It doesn't smell bad. But... It doesn't smell all, I don't know, like a bunch of cool oils like I thought it would. I'm not crazy about the sprayer, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, most of, when I try to spray it into my hair, most of it goes in a cloud around my head. And when I try to spray it into my hand, Instead of kind of concentrating into my hand, it kind of goes out and around it, which is weird. And I'm spraying pretty close. So. Doesn't feel bad. You just, 
it comes out in such a fine amount that it takes a while to get some into your hair where you really feel it penetrating down to the scalp. One thing I noticed, they do have, I don't know if you can see this on here, they do have a helpful little arrow on the top of the bottle, which is probably supposed to help keep you from spraying it in your eye, but didn't really help me, so. Um, to get pretty close to your head with it if you're going to spray it on. So now that I've got a fair bit of it in my hair, to say it feels pretty good on my scalp. My scalp is starting to tingle a little bit. My hair is starting to feel kind of soft and giving it a nice uh, kind of lubricated texture, I guess. So it's pretty well spread through with my fingers. Just going to comb it. So as I mentioned in another video, hair tonic is kind of an interesting component in your overall hair care regimen because obviously it's, it's not thick enough to really do to really style your hair into a pompadour by itself alone. But that said, you can see my hair was kind of a spiky mess before and I've combed it into a pompadour. So, but I had some buildup in there. So where I like to use a hair tonic is on those days in between using a heavy pomade, maybe you've used it for, um, I, in this case I've only used my heavy pomade for a couple of days, but usually four or five days a week uh, where I've just been shampooing with, with hot water or maybe uh, shampooing with uh, a light shampoo. I actually use, I use a bar shampoo. Um, which I thought I did a, a review on this and I can't find it so I need to redo that but we'll have a video about washing your hair with a bar as opposed to something that comes in a bottle. Um, but even when shampooing um, a lot of times with a heavy pomade like Murray's you will not get all of your buildup out. You'll have some residual buildup left over. And that's fine, that's part of what makes it so usable because it continues to gradually build up over a week or so and you get continued performance and you have to add less and less every day. The downside of that is eventually you get to a threshold where uh, your heavy pomade starts to, it starts to kind of reach critical mass, you know where you start to get buildup on your scalp, your scalp gets itchy and kind of dry and tight feeling and your hair just kind of starts to feel heavy and limp and it's just not really performing anymore and that's when you need to get in there with a clarifying shampoo or it's got it right here by the shower you know stuff like this or Dawn which is actually famous for breaking up grease um, a dish soap is usually really a, a, a good thing to use to, to strip that out. Uh, the important thing to do though after you've used a, a clarifying shampoo like that is 
to condition and nourish your scalp and your hair. And a hair tonic can be a great way to do that. A hair tonic can also be useful um, before you do that final shampoo uh, at the end of your cycle, as it were, to get in there uh, and help break up that grease build up on your hair and on your scalp so it washes out more easily. And that's particularly true if you're using one of these old school ones like Jerry's or Lucky Tiger that are alcohol based because something in the alcohol seems to break up the grease. So uh, what I would probably recommend if you had all of these is use one of these before you shampoo to break up all that um, week of, of uh, grease buildup and then after you shampoo use something a little bit more uh, wholesome like this that has essential oils and uh, ingredients that are designed to moisturize and nourish your hair and your scalp after the fact to kind of get a little bit of a reset going and then and maybe do that on your day off like when you're home from work one day and you don't have to really be anywhere uh, or when you can at least take an afternoon to kind of let that dry and nourish and do its its thing in your head before you put grease in again. So you know this is just stuff that I have experimented with over the years um, and what I have figured out through trial and error that works for me. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll alternate depending on the weather, depending on what my hair is doing. If I've used a heavy pomade for a couple of days and it's really kind of stiff and gummy and hard to comb, then I'll grab something like Royal Crown, put in there. It'll kind of help lubricate it a little bit, make it easier to comb. It's uh, not as heavy in my hair. Uh, and I, so I still have the benefit of the hold from the Murray's, but I, I get the manageability from the Royal Crown. Um, this is also really good when it's cold out, cold weather. Lighter pomades tend to be more effective in cold weather. Uh, in hot weather, they melt into a mess. So in hot weather, you're going to want to go with something uh, heavier. Um, so anyway, I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment on this. Uh, I have to say it feels better. Uh, on my scalp and in my hair than uh, these do, but these feel a lot more dramatic. These, you get that real astringent effect from these because of the, the high alcohol content. I don't know if this has alcohol in it actually. It doesn't. It, this has, um, this has a, a distilled water base. So, um, there may be some some of these ingredients that are that are in here that have a bit of an astringent effect, but it's not as pronounced as something like this that's straight up alcohol. And it's probably, honestly, it's probably better for your scalp because alcohol, while it has that kind of tingly feeling that feels great for a few minutes, as it evaporates, it actually dries your skin and your hair out, and it can contribute to dryness and breakage. And, uh, and things like that. So that's why these things are so cheap and they're probably not good to use too often um, and why I don't use them very often. So um, anyway, stuff's pretty good, feels pretty good. Um, one thing I will say, and this is also a contrast from, say, Jerry's, which I've been using recently. I put this in, and I become an oily mess. And I can't touch my hair without a sheen on my fingers. Whereas this stuff, you know, I can run all through here. And my, my hands are basically dry. Maybe a little tacky, but there's no oily residue. From this so that's a big plus for me with a hair tonic um, because the last thing you want to do is put something in your hair that's going to leave a stain on your pillow or that's going to you know melt as you as you sweat or whatever and get down and stain your collar and that's kind of a downside of these 
also. So hope this has been helpful for you guys. Thanks for checking in. Uh, I will be checking out some other hair tonics and some other pomades in the near future. I actually just ordered an old favorite. I'm just going to tease that right now and not tell you much more. Uh, but it should be coming in the mail in the next couple of days and I look forward to trying it again. It was a favorite not only of mine for performance but it was a favorite with the ladies back in the day. So, um, and some famous people have used it as well. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for checking in. Stay greasy and God bless.